for these types of goods that are coming in and out of the country or coming in and out of the airport. We also rely on it for food, for PPE, for medicines, for all the things that is required for people's daily lives. It is vital to the tri-state's economy as well that people have faith in their airports, they know that they are safe for cargo travel, and that the economy rests on a safe and secure type of travel in and out of our city. You need to feel safe when you're traveling. And I can't think of anywhere else that you need to feel safer than in, in our airports. And today we have proved that the system works and six people are indicted for, making, for, for doing what they did in stealing the cargo out of the airport. So in this case, the defendants allegedly used tractor trailers to haul away several pallets of designer clothes, handbags, sneakers, shoes, sunglasses, and other accessories. Their targets were Gucci, Chanel, and Prada, high-end designer brands. They knew they could easily trade for big cash payouts. The combined take of these two heists is more than $6 million. It is a greater haul than the infamous Lufthansa cargo many, many years ago. The crew indicted by my office allegedly carried out the first heist in January. In that take, they raked in more than 800,000 goods in Prada merchandise. Believing that they were not under suspicion for the first grand larceny, the crew in May carried out a second larger heist, feeling empowered. This time they grabbed pallets of Chanel and Gucci products, so much gear that they essentially needed their own warehouse to store those goods. Physical surveillance by the Port Authority and FBI led us to the location of that warehouse and of the stolen goods. One of the defendant's movements then helped us connect the dots. Historical cell site analysis of the defendant's mobile phone by the FBI put him at both the scene of the crime and at the stash house in Jamaica, Queens. That stash house is where the defendants already sold off a considerable amount of the stolen property. This defendant posted at least one video on Instagram showing off a spectacular ocean view from his room and visiting the iconic Fontainebleau Hotel. He even showed off a pair of the Chanel sneakers, just one of the items that was part of the stolen shipment. Here's the video of one of the defendants vacationing like a rock star. After months of free spending and probably thinking that they had gotten away with these audacious heists and brazen disruption, distribution in stolen merchandise, all six defendants have been indicted. The main defendants in this case are David LeCarrier, Le Le David LeCarrier, 33, of Manhattan, and Gary MacArthur, 43, of Queens. Both defendants are truckers, and they formerly worked at JFK Airport having inside information. Enlisting the help of Devon Davis for the second heist, an ex-employee of Delta Airlines, they found a place to store their stolen merchandise in a neighborhood spot near the airport. Davis had personal connection to Candy World Beauty Bar, the non-operating salon, was mostly empty storage space. Just before executing a court-authorized search warrant at the beauty salon, law enforcement came upon a buy that was actually in progress. Defendant Alan Vu of New Jersey was allegedly packing up his white Mercedes SUV with name brand products totaling more than $300,000. Inside these green plastic bags were 117 Chanel items, mostly handbags. Here are a few photos of the car stuffed with the alleged stolen Chanel items. Once inside Candy World, police discovered something resembling a messy stock room of stolen merchandise. There were mountains of boxes packed with designer gear, all of it still in the manufacturing packaging with the tags attached to it. We have video of what police encountered 
showing how massive this take was. And this was just the merchandise that the defendants have not yet sold. Let's show that video. Inside Candy World, police recovered more than 3,000 Gucci items, including clothes, handbags, and duffel bags. There were just over 1,000 Chanel products, including purses, jewelry, sunglasses, and numerous other accessories. The estimated value of the recovered merchandise totals more than $2.5 million. As a result of this investigation and suggestions made by my office and the PAPD, and the FBI, new enhanced security protocols have been placed at numerous JFK cargo warehouses, including the photographing of truck drivers attempting to pick up high value cargo, licensed scanners, placement of updated video surveillance teams uh, systems, stricter requirements on release times for cargo and double verification of the receiving drivers. I wanna thank all our law enforcement partners for this great work. And we definitely want to applaud the hard work and commitment of the Port Authority Police Department's team and the FBI task force, who truly are great partners. And before Matthew Wilson speaks, um, I just want to say, you know, we work together as a team with all of our partners in law enforcement. It is imperative in Queens County, where the two airports are part of my district, that this office and our law enforcement partners send a message out that our airports are safe for travel, that our airports are a place where people can entrust with their families. And this is one step closer to making sure that that happens. So thank you to the entire team. I now ask Chief Wilson to say a few words. Thank you, District Attorney Katz. Um, good morning, everybody. Um, I'm honored to stand here with you and the, the prosecution team of the Queens DA's office, the chief of investigators. Uh, on behalf of the chief security officer, uh, John Billich of the Port Authority of New York and New Jersey, Superintendent uh, Edward T. Setner of the Port Authority Police Department, I'd like to offer just a brief few comments uh, on, our, on our collective approach to uh, investigating uh, these crimes. Um, when you have cases like this uh, and they come together where criminals don't know borders, where they exploit their inside knowledge of an industry, where they plan, conspire, they move stolen goods from one area to another, offload the merchandise, and then return nearby to set up their own system to distribute this uh, merchandise. It takes a real integrated effort to be successful. And our problem started in January and then again in May. And we had a mystery driver, a fictitious pickup, and he boldly enters a distribution facility with counterfeit papers in order to gain access and to, to make off with goods. So what starts as a, as a reported crime to one agency, a responding police agency, um, gives you a small window of information and it's really a big problem. Um, what do we do to combat that? We join the airport community as a team, the law enforcement community, um, working with the PAP detectives, the FBI task force members, multi-agencies, NYPD is, uh, is with us here today, the Queens DA's office investigators. We gather evidence, we conduct interviews, um, and we take a broad and penetrating look at the problem with the help of our skilled uh, attorneys and prosecutors. Um, but a case like this could have taken and dragged on for years and years. It took a couple months, a few months, uh, and that's to the credit of everybody in the teamwork that was, that was involved. So we avoid a, a one-dimensional uh, approach to solving crime. Uh, District Attorney Katz highlighted the concern for the community, the airport community. 
um, and, and how we depend on our airports and we want safe travel. We want um, our employees and we want everybody to feel safe there. That's, I would say one word to that, absolutely. Um, we take the safety and security of our airport very seriously. Um, our communities depend on our airports for the travel, commerce and employment and they're among the busiest in the region. While the uh, pandemic might have slowed up some of the passenger travel, I will tell you that our cargo uh, and international cargo uh, is continuing. And um, it's just an immense area with a lot of activity with the trucking industry, with the distribution uh, of goods and commerce coming in internationally, going out internationally. So it's a lot to keep track of. Um, and I will tell you that we depend on it, not only our law enforcement community, but our community in the airport to, um, to be our eyes and ears. Um, I will note, it took a few months to put this together, which is incidentally record speed in bringing a prosecution in my experience. Um, they're to be commended the, the, the Queens DA's office for that. Um, but please know that when something like this happens, and this is a bit of an anomaly, um, we are, they get a response right away from the entire community that comes together to start vetting through and looking at the problem and addressing it, like District Attorney Katz said, certain steps get put in place, the security office, people come together as a team and they mitigate the problem and the vulnerabilities. I'd like to just close with a final point with saying that um, uh, how, how proud I am of everybody. And um, please, suspicious activity, please report it. Please call your, your, your local police. If you're at the airport, we have a tip line. And if I may, it's 1-800-828-7273. Um, thank you for your time. Thank you for having us today. And um, that's it, ma'am. Mr. Wilson, thank you, Chief. Thank you. Before we take, uh, before we take questions, I want to take the opportunity to once again uh, thank the FBI task force members, NYPD, NYSP, uh, HIS, Fed, uh, Air Marshals, DEA, Queens, everyone in my office, uh, Elizabeth and uh, uh, Kathy, Kathy Kane, and, and of course our chief Jen Nyberg uh, and Jerry Brave, who is the executive over the investigations committee and brings with him uh, all of his expertise. Thank you so much for that. Uh, and I guess uh, we are happy to take questions if there are virtual questions. We're either going to be doing a lot more of these or no more of these, depending on how this works. DA Katz? Yes, ma'am. Are, are you calling on reporters individually or we just speak up? I think we're just going to take, uh, you know, one or two questions if you have them. And okay. If, if I can't answer them, one of the handy team will be able to. Okay. This is Marla Diamond from WCBS Radio. Ma'am. I'm wondering how the authorities were tipped off to the thefts. How many of the defendants were former airport employees and where were these stolen items being sold? Uh, two of the defendants, David Locke Carrier and David MacArthur were formerly uh, airport truckers. Devon Davis was a former Delta employee uh, and they showed up the next day, right? So we were tipped off by uh, to this crime because when the true truckers and the true recipients of the cargo showed up, uh, clearly that tipped off the airport to the fact that uh, the people who had claimed to be those individuals uh, hours before uh, were not in fact them, uh, and they started the investigation. I'm going to uh, ask um, Ms. Kane if you'd like to elaborate on that. I think you summed it up, boss. There you go. Uh, what, any, anything else? Where were the items being sold? Well, the second heist was being sold when we finally came upon it because the first heist, uh, we were not there at the selling of the property. Uh, the second heist they were selling out of a salon that was out of business called Candy World in Jamaica, Queens. That is where we found most of the merchandise, $2.5 million of the merchandise uh, was still there uh, out of about a $5.2 million heist. Okay. Uh, one more quick question. Do you know how much these items were being sold for? Was it the market value? Was it a lot less? It was half. So uh, the items were being sold uh, for half of the market value. Um, 
And uh, we have the items here on the table. I don't know if you were able to pan it uh, to make sure that you could see it, but it was being sold for approximately half those items that we know about. Thank you. I believe we have one more question. Jeff at the Queens Courier, you're on. Uh, Jeff, you need to unmute your mic. No, it's just me. Apparently, you need to unmute it again. Okay. No, someone else? We're good. So if anyone has any further questions regarding uh, these indictments and regarding uh, these, um, these grand larcenies that occurred at JFK, you can please contact the office. Chris Policano is head of uh, public information. We'll be happy to answer your questions. But if nothing else, first of all, thank you everybody for um, joining us on our first live Zoom press conference. And second, I am committed to making sure that our airports are safe. I'm committed to working with our partners on the federal level and on the state level to make sure that um, all criminal activity at the airports is, is stopped and to make sure that people feel a safety, that they know they can entrust the law enforcement community at the airports so that when they travel and when they send goods, that all is delivered safe and sound. So thank you very much for your time today.